I'm Farah Mendelssohn. I've been writing on science fiction and fantasy for about 20 years. And I have a very good colleague in America called Mike Levy. I used to run conventions with him and conferences. And he wanted me to write a book on children's fantasy with him. Because the thing about children's book market is that it's split between the American market on the one hand and what we might call the British Commonwealth market on the other. And we need one person who knew one of those markets and one who knew the other. So, as we each knew half, we decided to write the book together. And what it tries to do is to cover the whole of the history of children's fantasy literature from around the 16th century to the present day. There's a lot of single author studies, and there are quite a few very good overview books, but the problem with those books is that they all cherry-pick the best books to talk about. So they talk about C.S. Lewis, they talk about Philip Pullman, or Charles Kingsley, or Christina Rossetti, or Diane Jones. What they don't do is give you a sense of the entire field and the huge range of that field. Fantasy starts off as kind of the base type of literature that everybody is listening to around the fire, that people watch on stage, that people read in chapbooks. It starts to become a literary fiction in the late 17th century when people like Charles Perrault and then the Grimm start collecting fairy tales and spreading them around. And then in the 19th century we get a body of really experimental writers associated with the Pre-Raphaelite school who start to try to write original fairy tales and original fantasy. And that becomes a much wider movement that's partially about art, partially about the printed book, the creation of new fonts, so that fantasy emerges as part of the art and crafts movement, and from there starts to end up in the body of wider literature until really the beginning of the 20th century, when we also start seeing it breaking through into adult fiction as well. fantasy, and by that I really mean anything up to about the 1950s, is quite protective of children. So a lot of the early fantasies take place in the house. It's only until the late 19th century they start taking place in the garden. It's only in the interwar period that children start breaking out into a wider world, so that children's fantasy in the interwar period matches with Arthur Ransom's ideas of children having adventures without maids, without nannies. And in the 1950s, we start seeing children's fantasy reflect children's experience of war. So children start having adventures in which they confront evil in faraway lands, which is easy to forget, but many children were doing just that in the 40s. And as we move into the 1960s, we start to see fantasy that's more about children's experience in school, because children are staying longer in school. And as we go into the 70s and 80s, we start to see the rise of teen fantasy, which is often much more concerned with children's emotions. Uh, puberty starts to become tied in with the notion of, of agency, so that as characters move into puberty, they gain magical powers, we start to see them growing up in magical terms, as well as in domestic terms. And as we get into the 1990s and 2000s, we see more and more fantasy for school-age people, because these aren't really children anymore, that reflect those teenage concerns about dating, about your sense of self, your sense of self-discovery. And it is noticeable that fantasy about personal identity is now kind of the key threat, which of course matches that experience of late teen years as you're entering into adulthood, you're trying to figure out who you are. So as well as reflecting changing expectations of children, it's also reflected that the longer childhood that we now have and has taken on the concerns of people who are not yet in the workforce, but aren't really children either. The role of children's fantasy in a child's imagination is in creating a playground. It gives children the idea of all sorts of possibilities and it allows them to test out really frightening experiences as well that if you put in mimetic fiction, you couldn't do without being too scary. 
the experience of being kidnapped and taken off to a strange place isn't actually very nice. But if you throw in a fantasy world, you can talk about the experience of entering new places, going to new countries, meeting new types of people, without that same level of threat. The tendency to ban certain types of children's fantasy, which is a more American thing than it is a British thing, has its roots in a mode of Christianity which just does not trust the fantastic. Because the problem with the fantastic is that it can cast doubt on religion. If you believe X is a fantasy, why should you believe in the miracles in the Bible? Why aren't they fantasies? So there's a, a real tension around what fantasy does in throwing doubt onto received faith. And a number of American Puritan traditions find that very difficult to handle. The key effect of the Harry Potter boom was to shift the market. Uh, the market had been dominated by social realism. There are many fantasy authors who struggled to stay in print during the 1980s and early 90s who were brought back into print. Uh, uh, Britain's possibly best children's fantasy writer, Diana Jones, was out of print for a while. All her work was brought back. And it created a huge market in children's fantasy, produced many fabulous books and some not very good ones. But it also, I think, made fantasy much more mainstream. The period in which if you read fantasy you're a bit weird has, has gone. Most adults read some kind of fantasy. I have a hard time picking a favourite children's fantasy book, but my favourite current author is Frances Harding. And of her books, I think my favourite of that is Face Like Glass, which is this amazing book set in an underground world in which people can't naturally make expressions and they have to learn how to make expressions. And our protagonist is one whose face is mobile, whose face can be read by anybody, and that's actually rather scary to the people around her.